Record. Right. Thank you very much for bearing with me. Do apologize. Welcome to our Tuesday afternoon soiree. Today is all about Beginner's Guide Search Engine Optimization. But as I'm here on behalf of the uh, Humber and East Yorkshire Hub, it is my duty to mention a little bit about uh, the Humber and East Yorkshire Hub just for one tick. So all about SEO today, the Hull and East Yorkshire Local Enterprise Partnership, here to, here to help. All about the Growth Hub, we're here on behalf of today, and all about the startups and all about connecting people up. And you can have one-to-one -one support, workshops, masterclasses, and digital resources. And I cannot think of a better person to meet other than your advisor on the, uh, on the Growth Hub. So you will get a copy of the slides as always, but well worth seeing all the help and support out there, of which is a late starting Tuesday afternoon webinar. But as always, for those of you who attended before, welcome back. For those of you who are newbies, please uh, hopefully you enjoy the next three quarters of an hour. Big day today, isn't it? England and Germany. Who's finishing work at five to five? Yes, are we gonna win? Well, who knows, who knows? Fingers and toes crossed. But we always start our, our session with a little quiz. And today is all about the internet. And oh, here we are, true or false, study quick five fire questions. Seven and a half percent of adults in the UK have never used the internet. True or false, Derek says true, Mustafa says true, and you are right. Isn't that good? Seven and a half percent, that's quite a few people if you think about that. Next up on the list, nearly half of all internet users live in Asia. True or false, hey. What have we got there? What have we got there? It, Rebecca, Shane, and yeah, we're, we're, on a, we're on a pattern today. That's true as well. My goodness. Here we go. Here's the next one. Visitors spend an average of 15 minutes and 13 seconds per day searching on Google. That is an average of all users. True or false? Hmm. Oh. We have, you know, it's, been, it, it's, it's a bit of a Spandau Bali appreciation moment because it is true. See how it seems. Uh, right, here is a good one, a bit, a bit more esoteric question. WordPress powers 40% of the top million websites on the web. True or false? Mm. I mean, how many, I bet a lot of you got WordPress websites. Is that true? Mm. Let's have a little look. What have we got? I, mm, everyone says true. And it is. There we go. Look at that. WordPress Joomla. Good word, isn't it? Joomla. I say that word, are you? Joomla. Drupal, Squarespace, and Shopify. WordPress has become the sort of Hoover, as it were. But technically, many people would argue that Joomla and Drupal are superior, but I'll leave that to others to decide. But there we go. And what's today's final question? Ha <laughs> ha, you're not true or false this time. The three most popular websites in terms of visitors. Who fancies a double at that one? Do you know, if you get this right, there's a prize. A prize that not even money can buy. It's me turning up on time next week. Now, uh, it is, what have we got? Google, a hey, Mustafa, Google, Facebook, Amazon. Eric, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Hmm. I think you're both wrong, but you've got the right ones. I feel like um, Andre Previn and uh, Eric Morecambe got the wrong, was it the, wrong, the right notes in the wrong order? For those of you old enough to remember that. Three most popular websites are, oh, there we go. Probably guessed Google, YouTube, Facebook. There we go in numbers. You can see how uh, things are dwarfed there. But today is all about a beginner's guide to being on the first page of Google or search engine optimization. So there's a lot to cover. 
please accept my apologies. We're going to go through things fairly quickly, but as always, we record things. There's a copy of the slides. I hope it just gives you each and every one of you an insight. So let's see what Google says. Now, optimization only really works if you've got a website or if you are trying to promote an app. But with, for, for the benefit of where we are, just five things to start the ball rolling of what Google says your website should ideally be. And it's a lot of uh, excellent information, which I'll refer to later because I will be referring or giving you words spoken by Google. But first and foremost, your website must be mobile friendly. Many are accessing that way. And within the Google world, as you can see on the screen, there is a mobile friendly test. You can find that there and you can see and it'll tell you exactly how a Google bot sees your page. So it must be mobile friendly. Secondly, your website, unlike it must be fast loading. How many of you are like me? Well, I wouldn't wish that on anybody, but um, Aries, impatient. But we want a load website to load quickly. So how do you find it out? Well, none other than the page speed insights. Great place to go to see how your website performs, both from a mobile perspective and a desktop perspective, and loading quickly. Thirdly, and we'll refer to this throughout our little soiree, your website should be easy to use, clearly to navigate, and a good user experience. Okay? So we'll come back to you. So now one of the ways in which to do that is to think very much about finding broken links and the like. So you want to actually also check the website's performance. Nobody wants to be clicking on things that don't actually exist. As you can see, there's a great place to go to check what's working and what's not. So, oh, Sam's asked a question. Oh, we're getting a bit there. When, where, where can I get a recording of the session? As I said, don't worry, it'll, you'll all get a copy of it and Derek's helping each other out. So there's a recording there. So next two things, ideally your website should be secure. So you want it to start with HTTPS. So if you're probably going to make crack open the piggy bank, some of you may get it for free, is to make sure you have an SSL certificate. Google likes your website to be friendly, so especially if it is a transactional site. And fifthly, you'd like to have du avoid, I should have put avoid on this slide, shouldn't I? Avoid duplicate content. And it's not a great experience to be seeing things over and over again. Now, I've done this fairly swiftly, but there's just five things there, because if, if, if Google are suggesting and telling us that it's the user experience that's really important and their latest changes in their Google algorithm are all about the experience. So if you, your website will score best if people can find it, arrive on it and spend time on it. So a few things to get us moving. But we might as well go right to the very beginning. And it has got abbreviated, what is SEO? Search engine optimization. Well, what is it? Well, I will read this for those of you who are not in front of your screen and are listening on a dog walk or you're doing the ironing. Increasing both the quality and quantity of website traffic through non-paid, knee organic search engine results. In effect, like a shop. You want more people to come through the door and they want the right people to be there. So, simple question. So why SEO is important? Well, just think of it this way. Imagine you're making blue widgets. What would you do in terms of marketing those blue widgets? Will you put an advert somewhere or a billboard somewhere? They may work, but you will be it will be possibly more in hope than expectation. Any passing reader or passing motorist may see your advert. Whereas optimization will actually 
pick up the intent, ideally, of people looking for the blue widgets. So that is very much the argument, is moving to trying to pick up your potential customers or your customers' intent. So is the idea, and this is where the Google will often refer to people intent, it, it, in effect, the, why SEO is important, it is trying to get people with commercial intent, and they are saying what they want to find, and Google is helping them find it. As you can see on the screen, acting something very, very simple. I want to buy a car. And you can see straight away what is like, what comes up. And you can see it very much starts with those who are advertising, looking very much to satisfy my intent. So here's a question for you. Quiz part two. Of all the search engines, as a percentage, how many search on Google? I'll have a little drink, and I'm going to go to this chat line in a moment. See who's put up the winning number. Mm -hmm. What have we got? Oh, 90% says Mustafa. 80 well, well, let's see. How, shall we see? We've got, we've got high. It's a bit, it's a bit like mm. seven. What's what is the answer? There we are. Out of date, but give you an indication that that Google is still extremely powerful. But they're also the Microsoft, Yahoo, Ask, etc. But the, the um, very much the thinking is that Google really is a, a place that most people will search. But you often, if it depends on the type of product you're buying, that people may well choose to, or the with the uh, tablet or the thing the, you 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 may, you'll find a default browser. So not always Google. So Google is principally where you wish to seek the greatest effort. So how many people search? Beyond, beyond the first page. Who's going to be shouting out some numbers? This then. Yeah, how many people search beyond the first page? What have we got? Oh, less than 20%, 10%, 5%. Much smaller numbers. Drum roll. Who searches beyond the first page? Let's hope the answer's in front of us or the page is stuck. 75% of users never scroll past the first page of search results. Sometimes actually it's quite interesting that people uh, will ignore the ads and then look at the top of the first organic searches and the bottom. So sometimes it might be better to be on the bottom of the first page as well as in the middle. But you know, for many people, it is the panacea be on the first page. So, final quiz question. How many pages on the net are, are actually searched as a percentage? So go on. Who's going to come up with some percentages? How many actual pages are searched? Ooh, well, oh, got a few answers here. Is, is this the answer to the first, second question, Chris? I don't know. Five percent. Anybody taking that one? 15%, I'm assuming that. This is, is probably the most surprising answer. That the percentage of pages actually searched is about 10%. 90% of pages get no organic search traffic, no visits. That's thought provoking. So for some people, you, you think about your own website, and you'll know this if you're studying your own analytics, be, you, by definition, will be usually for lots of small businesses with information-only websites, often just the homepage. There we go. So less is more for many, but so much depends on your business. So really, in a nutshell, 
you can see the kind of statistical backdrop, you can see what Google's asking. In its simplest terms, search engine optimization intent is all about trying to understand what people are searching for, the answers they're seeking, words they're using, and the content they wish to consume. Knowing what's in the brain of the person in front of the keyboard or the person who's speaking to Siri or Alexa. So this is the key thing. All and a, you know, you probably lost time, lost count of times I've mentioned the word intent. It's delivering in a way that the crawlers can understand. You're asking a question of Google or one of the other engines, and they are trying to interpret your intent. Now, the key thing to remember when you search on Google, you are not searching the web. What? Have you gone mad? No. Might, well, yeah, might that be arguable? You are actually searching Google's indexing of the web. And this is the principle about crawling and indexing. So crawling is a, from a uh, explanatory point of view. You scour the net for content and for each URL, but indexing, then you store and organizing the content. So you're looking for it and then you index it. So they are the key things when, when you in or in that space of time where you're talking or you're typing on in Google, but think of it very much that Google is indexing what you are looking for. And it comes up in this way, just by doing a very simple search, typing in a company name. It, that is my search query. And then it brings up that SERP, which is search engine results page. So that is what's brought up most of the time. And you can see on the right hand side for the pictures that is Google My Business, which we'll come on to in a moment. So I just did this earlier. I did a very simple search by looking for two different things, very simple stuff, typed in York weather, pizza York. You can see atypically what comes up for the weather. You can see about the, um, the temperature and then it also suggests other things. Again, it's trying to deal with my intent. And again, when I've typed in something up pizza in York, again, it's bringing up an advertisement or advertisement, if you can speak properly, your, um, your results through the um, review platforms, and then underneath the Google My Business. But again, it's maybe suggesting things. Even those are very, very primitive searches, you've got an idea. But with voice searches, they're often, they're usually questions or longer terms. So we'll come on to those in a moment. And this is it. These are the words taken from the mouth of Google. Their goal is to solve the searchers' queries, to keep the searchers coming back, and to keep them on the results page longer. That is Google's express aim. Principally, their aim is, to sell, is probably commercially orientated as well, to sell a few advertising things, hence why they appear higher up in the pages, but that's what Google wants you to do. They're also in a competitive market, as you've seen earlier. So their aim is to give you the best result and to keep you there. And here is where you can go. If you fancy a little bit of bedtime reading tonight, go on to support google.com and you'll see what the answers are in front of your very eyes. And it applies across a whole spectrum of different things. If you want to find out about Google, go on to Google. If you want to find out about Facebook, go to, the go to the horse's mouth, as it were. All in front of your very eyes, telling you all the things to do. Now, how many of you heard of Google Eat? Well, again, this is part of uh, the Google philosophy, the E stands for three things. Expertise, authoritativeness, God, I've been trying that word all morning, and trustworthiness. So again, something for a little bit of homework for you. Your website should ideally 
demonstrate these three things. So you can get you, you can get expertise by showing the, uh, what you put on the website as being in your particular field. Authority often comes from both that, but also the linking to other sites and the trustworthiness comes in reviews and the likes of having um, a, a SSL certificate. Worth checking out some of the very basic stuff. Google Eat. Now, with many of you who want to be found locally, there is no better advice than to make sure that you have Google My Business operating at top speed. Very simply, you register your business at an address, operate as a microsite, and off you go. And there is so much to it. If we haven't got time to do, and we'll do in future webinars, I'll cover on Google My Business. But as you've seen with Mangles, you can, you've got an idea that, that that's the, the, a local search. If you typed in pizza in York, because we've seen it earlier, it will bring up that and it integrates with Google reviews. If you wish to be found locally, become a master of Google My Business. You, by definition, then we're coming on to what we're trying to do here is to fulfill your intent. And there are three largely different types of searches. The first one is informational. So people often say, What is the best type of something? What is, where can I find? So information, then you've got navigational, searching for a specific website, as I've done earlier with the uh, example, and then transactional, looking to buy something. So informational, navigational, transactional. So when you come on, or should I explain in a minute, we come on to looking at keywords, you want to be addressing these issues. Now I must point something out. I'm actually not in my in my the west wing of my home today. I'm actually in a customer's building. So if you hear any background noise, please accept my apologies. If you hear someone say, "Oi, Simon, get on with it," I know my time's up. So on to homework. So think about going on to Google, clearing your brain, and looking, typing in questions based on those three search area, the navigational, informational, transactional, using your words, what you think your customers would like, and you'd be you get a good insight into the search engine results and evaluate those. So always think about considering the intent of your, your audience, and you put the keywords into those categories that we've mentioned Navigational, informational, transactional. So sheet of paper or three sheets of paper and off you go. And you will then look to research the type of content that people want to see. Now, it may be video, it may be all sorts of different things as you've seen, but it is all about them that you thinking about how you want your content appear. So, once you've done that, you then want to go and do some keyword research. So often the question asked is, where do I do this? Well, on the screen, probably in priority order, are four tools to use. Varying degrees of freeness with these. Uh, you can also have a very basic model, but you may wish to choose to invest in Moz, SME Rush, Uber Suggest, and there are others. But these are good places to go to do keyword research. Now, the likes of WordStream, which is another tool, this is the type of information you get. They are using a suggested email marketing. And you can see Type of the different, all the different permutations on the left hand side, the frequency, and then it goes to the Google search volume, the competition, etc. And you can see the type of keywords and the alternative keywords that may be brought up bulk email marketing to email lists, etc. And this is where you would think about with your blank sheet of paper, your keywords, 
and using these keyword tools to come up with the eight, the answers you believe are the keywords in which to utilize on your site. So you can also think about using these keyword tools to find out about the ranking of the different keywords. Here is an example using S -M -S -E -M Rush and using the website Marketo, you can see which pages rank the highest. And you can see it's often the home page will be first, the volume of traffic on the home page, and then all the way through there, you can see which pages, the type of views there. So use the likes of these tools to find the competitiveness of keywords. So that's just our little breather. So you've got the idea about looking for search intent, you're about thinking about writing keywords down in the different categories, doing some keyword research, and hopefully at the end of this, you have an assessment of the, of the, of the keywords in which you think your users will be using for your site. So what do you do with it now? Well, the first thing to do is to do some on-page optimization. So in very simple terms, what you're trying to do is to put your keywords, key phrases onto the page, each page of your website. What you might end up doing, if you have, say, a four-page or five-page site, you can optimize each page differently to draw in the traffic. But you know that a lot of, a lot of pages won't be found. So you may wish to think about how you will tackle that particular issue. But let's talk about on-page optimization. Now, this is probably the most salient slide you will get and this is what I describe. Oops, it's gone back. It's perfect optimization. It is an example of a page and all the things that you need to do. Time does not permit today, but I'm going to try and break down over the next five minutes all the different things to do for each particular page. Starting with the title and working your way down, you'll get a copy of this. You may wish to try and play, play with it and to think about how to do it. But you can see that it's very much about the title, the description, and then the user experience all the way through. So it's almost like the perfect page. Now I'll just go through some of the componentry on that page. The first thing to do is you can see on the screen is once you have your keywords, key phrases, is to optimize the title. So you can see when Google uh, robots will arrive, is to make sure the title of each of your pages on your website is optimized with those keywords. And also underneath that is the meta description, which is a limit on the number of characters. And again, you may wish to put your key phrases within that, but don't do keyword stuffing. That's not, Google doesn't like you to keep duplicating content as we saw earlier. The second thing there is to look to find where your page titles tag is, and you'll find it up there. So each page may be titled differently, but you'll find it up there as opposed to on the page itself. And here is the great example of the, of the sort of the meta description. A perfect meta description is like here. It is in, it's interesting, it's insightful, but it's also using keywords to get a free instant report. It, you know, this type of thing. So it's, it's, it's copywriting, but making it keyword friendly. So it reads well but also performs well. 
So once you've got your title sorted out and your meta description, you will then look to using the header tags to make sure they are optimized properly, the body content, and then the images. Okay, and we'll cover these. The body should be have thick and unique content. Google wants you to have a goodly number of words on your page. So it's good content. The content also is engaging, as you saw in the so engagement can come from how it's written, but also in the formatting. And then you would like to have the ability for your users to share this. So the capability of having social media sharing off the page and the fact that you want your audience to be able to think that is worthy of sharing. There's a body. Now, the alt attributes, often referred to as the alt text, is that Google doesn't know what your pictures on your website or web pages look like. So, therefore, you have to describe them. And that's using alt text. So you can even look at uh, read broken images where they're hidden by, by the software, it's recognized by the search engines and have any screen readers in place. So please describe your images using keywords. So you can do that within the website. And then you may wish to think about actually renaming, especially if you're creating pages, your URLs, as you can see here, with this situation, you may want to think very carefully as you get the opportunity to build in WordPress, Drupal, Joomla, wherever it might be, you do have the opportunity to actually name your pages in a particular way. One of the mistakes that people often make is that they may choose to rename the pages and if you do that and you've set up links to the old pages, you ain't going to be found. So that will score down. So be careful if you are renaming to think about all the places that are linked into those. Now, with this situation here, this becomes the issue about making your pages friendly, dog friendly, no less. And this is about having good landing pages. Now I'm going to flip between two pages here. You've got your home page there for the dog run lodge, which not, but would you think that might well be a slightly better landing page? We'll send you a dog walker. You tell us when and where. Great picture of a dog, less so there. You can see about creating the initial impression and again, back to the user experience. So landing pages, initial impressions. Now, that was a very quick rush through on-page optimization. Another thing is a very much of the part of the beginner's guide is to do links between the different pages on your site. So think about linking between the two pages. You have page A to page B. And I would encourage everyone to also use anchor text. What is anchor text? I hear you cry. Well, here is an example on the screen. You are describing the destination of where people are clicking. Again, you can make these key, hover the, the mouse over it and you can see where it will be going. So again, keyword friendly, it's user friendly to describe where people are clicking to. Then you have to think about something called link equity. What is link equity? I hear you cry. Well, here's a good example. Not very site for the time of year. But if you think you had a business that was involved in snow plowing, best example I could come up with this morning, 
you may well be writing a very good article or a blog relating to climate change or the growth or the amount of snow and, and some of the issues relating to that. And it may score really well. You may have lots of links to what I describe as a very informative, educational page. But you may have also be selling snow plows, snow shovels, snow boots, and they were the product pages that surround it. So what you wish to do, if you've got a page that's scoring well and is getting traffic on, and it, or is, is in a particular place, you link from that page to the product pages. So there's equity in terms of linking from something that's popular to the lesser ones. Many people are interested in reading about snow plows or snow shovels or whatever, but there's a really interesting, captivating story that you are creating that maybe that is a can give you the equity, which can sort of uh, be uh, passed on to the other pages. Think about link equity, which is all about content marketing. This is the idea that you'll be blogging on your website with quality, regular content that's keyword specific and keyword friendly, engaging. And your website is constantly changing and being updated. And again, a good experience. So this is the idea that people, you, website owners will blog. So think that you may wish to do that now. Who's heard of position zero? We're going to finish our beginner's guide talking about position zero. No, it's nothing for the karma suit. Don't you have to do oh, your cheeky things. So position zero, this is all about content marketing. Ah, you're probably thinking, featured snippets, how often these appear on the first page of Google. There we are. A feature of it and often known as position zero. So it is a question that's asked and a question that's answered. So it also uh, uh, dovetails in with the principle of intent. How do I get on to these featured snippets? Well, create content. The so one thing you may want to do, wish to do, like to do, should do, is to put pages on your website of questions and answers, questions and answers. And there you will end up possibly with people also ask. It is probably the most effective, quickest and cheapest way in which to get onto the first page of Google. And remember the different types of searches. One of them is informational. So if you have a particular question and you answer it, there'll be links set up, as you can see on the screen there. How long does it take for chicken pox to heal? Scenario, if you go to a particular page. So another part of your homework is to think about questions and answers, especially if you're addressing them. Keyword perspective. So your design your content, answer a question, it will then hopefully get help in a higher ranking. And again, from a user experience point of view, a heading and a list is a great way for people to access content rather than make it look like some old text. So that is, a, is using the featured snippet to be position zero. The final part of today's beginner's guide is to then think about how you can track your SEO. What should I do to see if it's working? And as we've referred to in previous webinars, what you would like to think about doing is onto your Google Analytics and to think about onto the audience section and organic traffic. So you can clearly see if it's working or not. I would say this, and I said this recently, there's very little point in having a website unless you are tracking its performance. So putting all this effort into optimization to get traffic there, spending money with Google, 
do all the different things you want to be able to manage its performance. And you can see, you can drill down, see which pages are ranking well, which aren't. So all the time thinking about using your Google Analytics to see if things are working or not. Well, our time is up in three quarters of an hour. Hopefully we've given with a, with a slow start, uh, we've given you an insight into optimization. So I'm just gonna summarize. Thank you very much for attending. But what are the things we should do? Well, remember the five steps we talked about earlier to make sure your website appeals to Google. The second thing then is to really think about your intent of your clients and your prospects. What atypical type thinking in? Think about the different type of searches they're undertaking and the questions they may be asking of you. Once you've done that, using some of the search engine tools out there to then think about the competitive element of those uh, words and to find the right ones. Once you believe you've got the right ones, then to judiciously add them to your site in the alt text, in the, in the images, in the body content, in the titles, in the meta descriptions, to do all those good things and then to optimize all your pages accordingly. Once you've done that, then you'll actually check up how it's working and see if it's working. If not, maybe trying to do something else. So in a very short space of time, I hope I've achieved my objective to give you a very much a beginner's guide. If I've thrown a lot of information at you, I do apologize, but you will have a chance. Watch it again if you so choose. You'll get the slides through. And you're welcome back next week. Next week, we're going to be sharing with you all about the different type of marketing tools and strategies you can use. So please feel free to join us next Tuesday. I promise not to be late. So, any questions? Well, I can't thank you enough, Caroline. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed the webinar. Rebecca's on her way to school. Which I hope that goes safely and well. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's another question. Is there any other further questions? Very informative. Well, thank you, Mustafa. I just to clarify, do you share the recordings and slides? I will do. You will get a copy. I will send you a link through to the recording. You'll get a copy of the slide. And as I say every week, if you are Humber-based business. And East Yorkshire, you will can find. You may even want me to um, to help you out, but not. I can't be in Humber because Ian, he's from Canada. Well, welcome, or should I say, bonjour? Because I know in Quebec you are uh, multi uh, speaking there. So, well, all the way from Canada. Yep. So, well, I hope you've enjoyed the webinar. I hope you enjoyed. And just one final thing: just remember where you are at five o'clock today. Yes, let's hope so. Right, oh, hang on. Oh, great question, can't go into, uh, the, Caroline asked a very quick question. There's a lot of discussion now whether people prefer to scroll or not. How does that work with Google wanting a certain amount of content? It's a great question, that one. It's very much back to the idea about making sure your website is mobile friendly, making it a great user experience. And you can soon see, hopefully, that you're, if you put your data and your, and your website presented in the right way, both for desktop and for that. But if you go back to the principle like Google Eat, expertise, authority, and trustworthiness, you need a certain amount of content to exude and to justify what you are saying. No content, no mates, Google speak. Hopefully that's answered that question. I hope so. And without further ado, I'm going to stop sharing and stop recording.